And welcome back. We are looking ahead tonight. A new documentary coming to Netflix tomorrow will put Spokane back into a familiar national spotlight. The Rachel Divide follows the life of former Spokane NAACP President Rachel Dolezal. Three years after it was revealed, she was a white woman who had been presenting herself as black. KXY Force Caroline Rourke working for you tonight with how the Dolezal story was about more than her race to the Spokane community. Caroline? Nadine, it was this headline of the white woman who says she identifies as black. That's what grabbed attention around the world. And the effects that the Dolezal story had on genuine conversations about race are not to be taken lightly. But Rachel Dolezal had been an, a university instructor, a community leader, the chair of a police watchdog group right here in Spokane. And when the global frenzy died down, people in this community had to deal with the consequences of this story beyond its spectacle. Almost three years have passed since this clip exploded onto television and computer screens around the world. Are you African American? I don't, I don't understand the question. But before Rachel Dolezal's story broke, people in the Inland Northwest were already asking questions, and not just about her ethnicity. In both North Idaho and Spokane, Dolezal reported being a victim of hate crimes, but her claims didn't stand up to investigation. When it was revealed in June of 2015 that she had lied about her race on an application for Spokane's Police Ombudsman Commission, an ethics complaint was launched. But it wasn't the first. A month before, in May 2015, a whistleblower had filed a misconduct complaint against Dolezal and two other commission members. She was voted out of the position by the city council. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. There have been some statements made about eth ethnicity, but really at the heart of the matter is truthfulness, integrity, and transparency. The making of the racial divide sparked controversy, with some critics saying it's unnecessary, even unhelpful. Early reviews say the film does devote time to address Dolezal's contradictions and how they've affected people of color as described by people of color. The bulk of the documentary, though, chronicles Dolezal's daily life today, three years later. But the New York Times review says the film's real perspective comes from Dolezal's sons, who also have to live with the aftermath. I resent some of her choices and I resent some of the words she spoke in an interviews. We did reach out today to see if Rachel Dolezal wanted to share a comment with us on the release of the documentary, but we haven't heard back yet. In studio, Caroline Rourke, KXOY4 News.